Now we are going to start third type of ratio that is debt management ratio. That is also known as leverage ratio or capital structure ratio. The first ratio under debt management, but before that I want to say, uh, why debt management ratio? Because we want to evaluate the capabilities of the company, the capabilities of the borrower, whether the borrower or the company can manage debt. You know that some companies, they uh, apply for debt, they receive debt, they receive loan, uh, but they are unable to use the loan amount. And later they fail to uh, repay the principal and interest. So it is important to know about debt management capabilities of a company. The ratios are simple. One is debt ratio. How can we calculate debt ratio? Total debt divided by total asset. Total debt means long-term debt. So long-term debt incorporates bank loan plus bond. You know, some companies, they issue bond, but not all companies. If it is a public limited company, they have permission from Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission, and then uh, they can issue bond. But most of the companies have long-term debt loan from financial institutions like banks. So total debt means long-term debt. We are not considering here uh, current liabilities or short-term debt. So long-term debt divided by total assets. We want to know their long-term debt position compared to total asset means what percent of total asset is long-term debt or total debt. So if you see that a company has total assets of Taka 10 crore and they have already a debt of Taka 8 crore means 80% of total assets. What do you think? Do you go for further loan facilities for them? they have already 80% of their total assets is debt. That means if they have a total asset of 10 crore, eight crore assets acquired by using debt. And another it's not a good company. Sir. It's not a, it's, it, it, if it's a good company, but you will not go for a further loan facilities for them. So when you find another company, they have a total debt of 40 lakhs and they have a total assets of one crore. So it means uh, among these assets, one crore assets, 40% is acquired by debt. So 60% is their own assets. And these way, debt ratio will help you to know whether they have is still chance to get debt or not. B is a times interest on ratio. C times interest on ratio. So when you are appraising credit proposal, loan proposal, you need to evaluate the borrower's capabilities regarding payment of interest. So you must evaluate whether the borrower can pay interest. So how can you evaluate? For this, you need to know about earnings. If they are earning before interest and tax is really higher than interest charges, you can say, yes, they can have capabilities to pay interest. So if a company is earning before interest and tax is one crore and their annual interest charge is 20 lakhs. So their earning is five times higher than interest charges. It means they can pay interest. But if you see that another company, their earning before interest and tax is one crore and their annual interest charge is also one crore. So what they earn, they pay it for interest. Do you think this company is good for another loan? No, sir. No. And the third one that I'm not going to explain the C, I'm going straight away to D. It's also a simple ratio. 
but these will also give you the result about debt management. What it is? Long-term debt divided by shareholders' equity. So we know that in the balance sheet liability side, we have current liabilities, we have long-term debt, and we have shareholders' equity. But we want to know whether shareholders' equity is more than long-term debt or long-term debt is more than shareholders' equity. If you find a company uh, where the situation is like this, long-term debt of the company is taka 10 crore and shareholders' equity is 5 crore. It means shareholders invested 5 crore, but they have already borrowed 10 crore. So it's a, a borrowing company. It's, it's most of the assets are collected through uh, borrowings. Uh, so if this company asks for more loan, you can't go for a uh, further loan because they have already taken huge loan. Their equity is lower than long-term debt based on debt equity ratio. But that is not final because you have already liquidity ratio, you have asset management ratio, if you find that these companies asset management is very good, that case is their capabilities of managing asset is really good. They have liquidity. So that cases you can compromise. Otherwise, if you see that long-term debt is really huge compared to their owner's equity, shareholder's equity, you should not go for the company. Another important ratios are profitability ratio, but calculation is easy. But it's still, as a credit manager, you must know their profit scenario. You must know last five years, uh, what are they doing? Their profit margin is growing or declining. So you need to calculate some profitability ratios. And that will also give you assurance that other company uh, can pay the loan amount, can pay the interest. The first one is profit margin on sales. You can easily calculate net profit divided by sales or net income divided by sales or earning after tax divided by sales. So uh, you can calculate profit margin ratio this way. So if you find that your net profit is 30% to sales, uh, it's good, it's 20% to sales, it's good. But if you see that it's only 2% to sales, 4%, 5% to sales, we can say our profit margin is not good enough. Uh, you can use some other ratios, but all are very simple. Calculation is very easy. Return on total assets. So you can compare your earning uh, with your total assets. Uh, you can compare your earning after tax with common equity. You can uh, uh, go for gross profit divided by sales. You want to know that gross profit is what percent of total sales. You can also use operating profit ratio that earning before interest and tax is what percent of sales. Uh, uh, you can also use uh, return on capital employed. So these you need to understand why the word is capital employed. We know that we have shareholders equity. So we start a company with shareholders equity, that's fine. But shareholders equity is not only sources of capital. The company used long-term debt as well. So shareholders equity plus long-term debt known as capital employed. So you see only shareholders equity is not uh, uh, used for running the business. The company also used long-term debt and that is also employed. And that's why total capital employed means shareholders equity plus long-term debt. Now you have a good scenario. Earning before interest and tax divided by total capital employed. You want to know that earning before interest and tax is enough compared to total capital employed. So profitability ratio will help you to uh, understand a profit scenario of the company. And if you find that their uh, profit margin is uh, really a better, the return on total asset is satisfactory, return on common equity is good, operating profit shows really good, return on capital employed is good. These cases, you can go for the company. The last one, last type is market value ratios. But remember, uh, uh, all the companies are not enlisted in the uh, stock market. So these ratios are especially for public limited companies, public limited companies. 
So you need to evaluate their performance in the market. What are they doing in the market? So that case is you use all this ratio for sole proprietorship or partnership for private limited company. Uh, 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 you don't need to go for these kind of ratios. But if it is a public limited company and they have share in the stock market, then you need to evaluate some of these kind of ratios. The first one is price earning ratio. Price earning ratio. How can you calculate? Market price per share divided by earning per share. Where you have this information, market price per share, you can collect from CSC and TSC website. If you visit uh, uh, CSC and TSC website, Chitogan Stock Exchange and Hakka Stock Exchange websites, uh, you will find every day's market price are available there. So you don't need to calculate market price per share. Earning per share, you can uh, collect this from annual report of a company, or you can also calculate earning per share. How can you calculate earning per share? Uh, earning of the tax, EAT, divided by number of shares of the company. Then you can calculate price earning ratio. So why you calculate price earning ratio? Because you want to know what should be one's investment to have Taka one from a share. So if you want to earn Taka one, how much you have to invest? If you want to earn Taka one, how much you have to invest? Price earning ratio will give you the answer. So if uh, you want to make some quick money, or uh, if you want to see uh, that some companies are good for uh, earning more, with cheaper investment, then uh, you can use it. Uh, suppose one company uh, price earning ratio is two. It means to get Taka one, you have to invest two. Another company's price earning ratio is five. It means to earn Taka one, you have to invest Taka five. But remember, always cheaper is not good. Uh, some good companies, uh, you have to invest more because they have goodwill and others, but later you will be benefited. Another issue is market book value ratio. Market, market price per share, you can also collect from CSC, DSC website, what I have mentioned. And book value per share, you can have information from annual report uh, uh, where it is mentioned the uh, book uh, value per share. That is uh, uh, issued uh, value per share. Uh, earning yield is absolutely reverse of price earning ratio. You see that price earning ratio is market price per share divided by earning per share, and earning yield is earning per share divided by market price per share. Uh, dividend yield, that is a dividend per share divided by market price per share. Dividend per share. So if a company's dividend per share is taka 10 and market price per share is 20, so dividend yield is how much? As you say that, dividend per share, market price is 20, and dividend is taka 10. So the result will be 0.5. You are getting 50% uh, uh, of market prices dividend. So these all are the ratios that we need to cover. We have five types of ratios. One is liquidity. Second one is asset management. Third one is debt management. Fourth one is uh, uh, debt. Uh, fourth one is profitability. And fifth one is uh, market ratios. Uh, I have already explained all the ratios. Now it's your time again. And then I will answer all of your questions related to